Saturday gone by, billions around the world were glued to their television screens. They were watching the mother of all cricketing rivalries, the India versus Pakistan clash. India's emphatic victory made headlines. Everyone celebrated it around the world. But a video that went viral shortly afterwards has left a bitter taste for some people. Mohammad Rizwan, on whom many Pakistani fans pinned their hopes for their team's victory, was seen whack- walking back to the pavilion as Jai Shri Ram chants were heard echoing in the background. A group of fans shouted Jai Shri Ram multiple times when a dejected Mohammad Rizwan walked back after being dismissed by Indian pacer Jasweet Bumrah. What happened next was criticism from unexpected quarters. Well, unexpected for the sports persons, but perhaps not completely out of the blue, as it was politi- politicians who really raised the hackles. All started by the DMK. Odayniri Stalin, a minister in Tamil Nadu, the sports minister, in fact, of the state, came out and one was the first one to say that this is unacceptable behaviour that we saw at the Narendra Modi Stadium in Ahmedabad. That sentiment was then echoed by a few others as well. What then went viral was an image for a few days before the match. Mohammad Rizwan was seen offering namaz on field during a break in the match between Pakistan and Netherlands. The Pakistan wicketkeeper was seen offering uh, prayers in the middle of the Rajiv Gandhi International Cricket Stadium in Hyderabad. But is this debate around jingoism a one that stretched too far? Are actions of a few perhaps erroneously being attributed to an entire nation? And are conclusions being drawn about a certain political ideology driving it? Some even asked if this was a response to the man himself and that his acts in the past and it's not really a generalized reaction to the entire team or of an entire nation. Before we open that up on the panel tonight, let me take you through what has transpired so far. Why this has taken a political turn is like I pointed out, the DMK stepped in. War of words broke out between the BJP and the DMK. Udayidi Stalin, uh, Stalin Jr., as he's also known, came out and said that India is renowned for its sportsmanship, for its hospitality. To which Gaurav Bhatia of the BJP came out and said, reminding of the dengue, malaria and Sanatan Dharma remark that uh, Udhanidhi Stalin had made in the past, that he really is the one who is spreading poison and there's absolutely no reason to bring politics into what transpired. Udhanidhi Stalin then went on to say that treatment to Pakistani players was unacceptable. It was a new law, is what he came out and said. The BJP promptly responded and reminded of the namaz that was being offered on field and asked, why was the DMK silent then? Udhanidhi Stalin came out and said that sports should be a unifying force between countries. To which the BJP and the state president of Tamil Nadu, Anamalai, came out and said that Jai Shri Ram chants are not an insult to the Pakistani players. It's just the sentiment that was witnessed on field in the stadium that day. Udhanidhi Stalin then came out and said that using sports as a tool to spread hatred is condemnable. To which the BJP came out and said that these are just emotions. Udhanidhi Stalin must not comment on this, must stay out of it. That was the clear message that the BJP was trying to give. Now, let me take you through some of the instances when Pakistani cricketers have brought in religion themselves. Not to say that two plus two uh, or two rights, uh, two wrongs make a right. But there have been times, and like I said right at the beginning, that perhaps this was about the man himself and not about the entire team or trying to target them. We've seen ugly politics around what has happened in the past. Let's take a look at some of these instances. Imran Khan, former cricketer, former Pakistani Prime Minister as well, back in 1982 had said that cricket with India is not just a game, it's jihad for Kashmir, a politically loaded statement. Then we had Rawalpindi Express Shoy Bakhtar back in 2020. He said that Pakistan will first capture Kashmir, then invade India for Gazwai Hind. He was a cricketer, making political statements off the field, but we didn't see any outrage then. Wakar Yunus had to apologise in 2021 after he stated that Rizwan offering namaz between Hindus and his favourite part really of the match was the fact that he was there to offer prayers. So does religion have a place on the field? Should religion not be kept out? And why make this about a political party or dispensation? Why just not talk about sport? That's the big tonight, big debate tonight. Hello, Moto. Joining me on this broadcast is Vice President of Tamil Nadu BJP, Narayan Tirupati, Tosi Vemat Khan, Advocate and Political Analyst with us as well. And Advocate Vineet Jindal too joins us on this broadcast. He's the one who's knocked on the ICC's doors now for action against Mohammad Rizwan. But let me begin by asking uh, Tosi Vemat Khan. These are actions of a few, perhaps an overzealous lot as you would say, when these Jai Shri Ram chants were, uh, were witnessed, were heard inside the stadium. 
Why make it political? Why link it to the political dispensation in the country? No, you cannot say that it is a one-off incident. It is all over. Uh, it has been normalized, and that is the fear. You know, the hate has spread so deep into the society that we see all this. It has never been so. And uh, if we go, if we look at the history, this poor India and Indian people, the spectators at the stadium have always shown, um, you know, this sportsman spirit and welcoming especially if it is a host country we are we are you know host country we 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 have always welcomed uh, the for foreign players on our soil but yes we have supported our team and in fact we have a right if our team they have not performed better in in the past we have shown our anger the spectators in the stadium have shown our anger have shown their anger against our own team but when it comes to any guest team we have always shown ourselves as a civilized society sure not like uh, not like a maniac who who passes this kind of comments and what does it does it what what have they achieved please tell me by doing all this what have they achieved and it is it, these kind of action has to be condemned if you do not condemn it now you are giving them a signal that okay this is normal this is normal in country going forward there will be more such but loss. what is not normal about comment. it why do you say this is hate why do you say this is hate being normalized in the first place no, because because the kind of uh, you know the the kind of uh, uh, you see the nadabazi the slogan and the kind of behavior it has got nothing to do with the sportsman spirit i can understand if someone uh, makes a reaction about something unjust happening for example if if uh, um uh, if, if there was a wrong decision by a third umpire or some some incident which could you know in any way justify a public reaction there's no such thing simply a uh, a uh, 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 batsman after getting out is going back to pavilion and these comments are what have you really achieved please tell, explain it's not that we have lost the game we have already we, have, we were so, winning we were this became a one so side there's just, no it match it was just this one set of fans perhaps in the moment caught up in the moment at how well india was doing and that's really what it was all about where does hate come into the picture that's what i'm trying to understand see the more we say that no uh, this is not hate then we are normalizing it we are supposed we have always uh, you know uh, extended a very uh, a good welcome to the sure. host countries uh, to the and, guest con uh, to the guest and, players and the guest players and the guest team in this case pakistan was also accorded that same welcome if you've seen those visuals those videos that have gone viral as well yeah, when Hyderabad, they arrived in ahmedabad they did they did get all yeah. of uh, the welcome that everyone else got there was absolutely no distinction being made no, the the treatment of the uh, by by the spectators in hyderabad stadium and compare it with the Ahmedabad stadium. We did not hear it. We did not hear such things in Hyderabad. But this happened in Ahmedabad. So does it does it really suit the people of Ahmedabad uh, to give out this kind of message? And surely such uh, incidents will be condemned by any right-thinking person. Just take an example. Are we send our kids to school? Uh, we if they if in a if they play a game and if they uh if they you know indulge in if the parents there or the teachers there indulge in any kind of you know passing slang comments and all would you tolerate that or would you uh, encourage them from doing that or you would actively discourage them from doing it but this so 